Hey guys, welcome back. This is Little Fever here, and today we are here for another restoration, this being of another Atherin Blue Box, and this being a Southern Pacific Train Master locomotive. This will be my first time tearing into one of these locomotives. It does seem to be a little bit of an older blue box, so around the 1970s, 1980s, as far as the light research I've done. And now let's test the performance of this locomotive before we restore it. So just starting off and forwards, slowly turn up on the controller. You can hear a hum from it. There we go. Starts off decently slow. And is decently quiet for the amount of metal parts it has in it. All right, now let's open up this locomotive. All right, now let's open up this locomotive here. There are two little metal pins that stick up that you have to take the plastic body off of. I'm gonna try to twist and get the body off. There we go. Got that side off, now let's move over to the other side. Sometimes you can do these just with your nails, sometimes you can't. Okay. One more. There. Right now we'll set the body off to the side and clean that up. Now let's look at the core of this locomotive. You can see the motor in the middle, the two ginormous flywheels. The mounting is a little rocky and every all the connections in there. The horn hook couplers seem to be in good shape for how old they are. So now let's first tear into each of the trucks here on the side. You can do that by removing these little covers on the side. Let's take a screwdriver. Try to pop them off. This one seems to be a little oily. out and I can fish it out. Now it's time to get the other one. This one's gonna be a little bit harder since it is obscured by the metal. There we go. I'll we'll fish this one out too. Make sure not to lose these little plastic pieces that will come out of the drive shaft. Those are very important. Now we'll set the body to the side as well as the pieces that be removed. Now we are going to be wanting to open up these trucks on the inside so we can clean them up and see what's going on inside of here, as well as clean the wheels themselves, because you can see the level of rust on the steels. All right now to disassemble the truck as you see before you, there are two pieces you need to remove first. There's a top piece up here. Just get a screwdriver underneath there and wedge it over should come off pretty easily. And then you can either stick them in to the side, to this bottom piece. And you see how that's coming up now. Or you can just put it through the end. That also works. Sometimes they can be a little bit stubborn. Uh, this one looks to be in great shape for its age. Not a lot of cracking or not a lot of stuff like that. There you go, that piece came off. Let's set that to the side. Now you should be able to simply open it up with a little bit of wiggling. Now we have two sets here. And these have a thinner style of lubricant or, or oil in them. I was planning on putting some sort of thicker grease in there, so I'll wipe up some of this oil and I will add the grease there. But before we do that, 
want to polish up the wheels here, and I'll be doing that by using a track right and scrubbing that against the wheels until they're all nice and shiny. Let get a little bit shinier just there. And I'll do this for about 10 to 20 seconds per wheel, and I'll go ahead and do that now off camera. All right, now I'm done cleaning the wheels up, so now it's time to add some grease to these gears. Just wiped them with a cotton swab off camera here. And so I want to just get a little bit into the teeth. You can spin them without any motor power or with the wheels in. And I'll just wipe that there. And what you can do now is get a wheel, stick it in, and you can start to spin some of the grease in. Try to get on the teeth as well as the tops and bottoms of the gears. Because these sidewalls, it'll touch these sidewalls. And if I just flip one around here, it'll spin a lot more smoothly when it's touching those sidewalls. Let's do that with this one too. There we go. All right, it is spread in well. Just going to add in three random sets of cleaned wheels. Since they're now all clean, doesn't matter where they come from. It's always fun once I'm done with the wheels here because they decide to plummet off the table. We have now put three clean sets of wheels in. We will grab its matching plate they won't fit in any other way if you don't grab their matching plate. Make sure that the wheels are in fully. I'm going to add back the small piece here. There we go. Clicked in. Now the floor piece. Spread around the lubricant a little bit. And now let's just do it to the other side and I'll get back to you. Now that we have our two completed pieces, we will set them off to the side. Hopefully they don't roll away. And now let's work on the motor itself. First move this light wire. Now we can take off some of these loose pieces. And you see in here, to the commutator, the two flywheel weights, the motor itself. So we're going to need to clean that up. I've seen several ways to do this. The best one, or the one that works best for me, is using a eraser from a pencil. Just setting it there and spinning the motor by hand. This does leave a few shreds behind, but this is a lot more effective than some of the other ways I've seen online. There are tools such as a fiberglass pencil that will work even better than this, but using Q-tips or like a toothbrush is not advised. Okay. Take a look here. You can see how much more shiny it is. Try to backwards spin it so that we get rid of some of the eraser shreds that are in there. It shouldn't leave that many behind, but Quick blowout should get the rest of them out. I'll wipe it one more time and then we'll go on to the next step. The next step is to clean out the gaps in the commutator. So I'm just going to use a toothpick for this. And using something harder has the potential to scratch the copper and the copper could bend out of place, potentially wearing down your brushes and your motor a lot faster. And that's not a fun time for anybody. These gaps seem to be relatively clean already, but you can see the minuscule amount of gunk that we cleaned out of there. Right now, that should be cleaned up. I will lubricate one bearing on this motor. That is the one on the opposite side of the commutator. I'm not gonna oil the one next to the commutator for the potential 
risk of it burning onto the motor or anything like that. It's already pretty free spinning. There we go. Now we will attempt to put the trucks back in the locomotive. Hopefully doing them in the correct order. Set it in, make sure it hooks with the top metal piece. And there should be little pins that it rests on. Now the same with the other side. There we go. All right, like our pieces we removed earlier, let's stick these U-joint pieces back in. Sometimes they can be a little tricky to line up. And now make sure that both bearings sit flat and square into their housings, not like this where it's sticking up. There we go, that one is in. Now I'm just gonna put a little bit more grease on top of this one. Try to get in the teeth. And we can put the cover back on. Snap that down, make sure that both sides are down. Give it a few practice spins. There we go. Next, we'll add some lubricant to both U joints. This one here, and the one inside of the flywheel weight. And next, we just have to replicate this for the other side. So I'll get back to you then. This side should be a little bit more tricky since there's a metal piece on top, but it shouldn't be that hard. One last thing now. You must lubricate the back axles inside of here. And that should be it for now. Let's see if I put it back together properly. It does seem to be very free rolling or free spinning. Now let's test the locomotive before we put the body back on. All right, now the locomotive is set on our little test track here. So let's test it off in forwards, turning up on the controller slowly here. Oh, there we go, wow. Barely any power and it's off and moving. Now let's try reverse. Here we go, it's sure picking up a little bit faster. Might have cut out, there we go. A lot quieter than to begin with. The light seems to be not that terribly strong, but I don't have any replacement bulbs, so this one will have to do for now. All right, now let's send it off and put the body back on. To put the body back on, you simply just take it, set it over. You can press down, press down equally, and it grips almost. There we go. It's gripped on this side, turn around. Let's just move a little over. All right, and the body is on. I did just dust it off a little bit off camera here. And now let's test how the whole engine looks and performs. One final time on the test track here. I did a little bit of tweaking on the inside here with the glass, so this should stop the rattling noise. Sending it off and forwards. There we go. It's a lot quieter than it was at the beginning, and it doesn't have that rumble sound anymore. All right, now I think I have finished this locomotive's restoration to the best of my ability. So now let's move on to the conclusion of this video. All right, now I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching, making this fun video. I had a lot of fun restoring this locomotive and exploring a new kind of Atherin Blue Box locomotive. I think its body is in excellent shape and all that stuff now. The only thing that's kind of sad are these handrails. I don't have anything that I can do about that right now, but on the inside, we cleaned up the gears, put some fresh lubricant in there, cleaned up the commutator and all that. We 
Tried to work a little bit with the light, but I couldn't do that much with it. The horn hooks and all that were in excellent shape. I do not have any spare knuckle couplers to put on this locomotive itself. And again, I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. Make it this far, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!